What I like about the Olympus OMD range is its portability without sacrificing quality. My images are more than good enough for quality reproduction in books and magazines. As a walker, and dare I say proud owner of a bus pass, then size and weight are very important. I might walk for miles without any transport. Therefore, I don't wish to lug around a load of gear that I probably won't use through poor planning. Think about what you want to achieve through research first. This selection of photographs was taken in 2019, often with one camera from the OMD range and one lens at a time. Usually the 12 to 100 Pro lens, my favourite optic, but also the 12 to 200 and the excellent budget lens, the 14 to 150. But quality has not been sacrificed because I abandoned everything else. I like to show what Olympus gear on its own is capable of achieving. Anyway, I just don't need anything else except perhaps uh, an organ survey map and of course my lunch to keep me going. Let's start bright and early before breakfast, but wake yourself up first with a cup of tea. Lulworth Cove is ideally situated for dawn shots. With the change of clocks at the end of March, you have lost an hour and have the luxury of rising a little later. This was taken at 7am, which would have been 6am the week before. To avoid flare with a zoom lens, set aperture to f16 minus 0.7 EV and spot meter near a highlight with the help of an electronic finder. I hate burnt out highlights. Can't do much about the sun, of course, but you can tame it with this technique. But be careful of your eyes. The classic golden dawn and a touch of mist that requires skills beyond photography. You can have technique oozing from your fingertips and elsewhere, but for this you are at the mercy of weather that needs to arrive at the right time and in the right order. Rain the previous day helps, clearing to leave a cold night and not a breath of wind. Then you might be lucky, but it is not guaranteed. This shot was taken from the grounds of H.F. Holiday's Hotel at Derwent Bank, which are private. If you are not participating in one of their excellent holidays, Nichols End offers a similar view just around the corner. I believe in grab shots, even landscapes. That is why the camera is currently set on program. Unlike auto, you can still add your personal settings, such as white balance and metering. I wasn't dashing for the boat, but a bus, which it was meeting for Iona. The combination of a sudden but brief break in the morning cloud and the position of the vessel adds a touch of romance and promise to the photograph. Don't be fooled into thinking that I only take images in good light. That might be a commercial requirement, but I also belong to a camera club where the competitive requirements are different, which I enjoy rising to. Now this shot might not make the grade, but it illustrates the drama that heavy cloud and a splash of sunlight create, even when you are suffering for your art. Essential is to spot meter a highlight, save to raw and, if necessary, correct in Lightroom. Controlling the enormous dynamic range is essential. The photographer needs to take control. Definitely not a shot for auto, not even program. With the wrong kind of sun, I might give up. However, I couldn't. I was escorting a party of photographers around Scotland, so you have to stay calm and carry on. I avoided that tripod-marked cliché shot 
at this part of Rannoch Moor. But this location I find just as interesting, but with the right sort of sun. Nevertheless, that brief splash of sunlight on Borko Etiv Moor raised our spirits a bit. And it is amazing how the lighter grasses pick it up. Afterwards, we adjourned for refreshment in the refurbished King's House Hotel. Recommended. I always underexpose rainbows, otherwise the colours are washed out. I saved the raw, giving me the additional scope to adjust exposure and a few other things in Lightroom. Heavy cloud helps, but in the distance is a lighter patch and it is all too easy to inadvertently overexpose that beyond correction. To avoid this, I spot meter with the assistance of an electronic finder. First, check that autofocusing is on S-AF in the menu. That allows you to lock the exposure by half depressing the shutter button. Recompose if necessary and then take shot. I have experienced rainbows before at Lock Eyelot might be something to do with its geography, worth remembering when the weather is showery. Unfortunately, this is a cliché view. Oh, why not? But I had to join the queue first. This one might be different. I never view castles as happy places. Therefore, taking advantage of a photographic limitation, I kept the ruins in heavy shade by spot metering the sunlit waves, giving the impression of impending doom and foreboding. Also, by switching to shutter priority and a very short shutter speed, not only have I frozen the waves, but have captured the spray too. Makes a change from milky water, which a Facebook friend always complains about when I do it. Not everyone likes it, and you do have choices, so why follow everybody else? Here I'm in danger of taking another much photographed view. I have tried to offer something a bit different to the rocks that I also photographed and from which the place takes its name. One of the hidden advantages of micro four thirds is extra depth of field, but not to the point that differential focusing isn't possible. Here I deliberately kept the grass and sun in focus with traditional techniques. I checked the metadata because by zooming in only just a bit I had reduced depth of field. Nevertheless, traditional techniques won the day by using a small aperture and focusing in around 100 feet, creating the hyperfocal distance, ensuring that the foreground remained sharp. The grass was also blowing in the breeze, but the fast shutter speed took care of that. Castle Rig Stone Circle must be one of the most photographed places in the Lake District, and here I am but with a photographic party, some of whom have never been here before. With a bit of careful planning, I socked it to them with a sunset, not the best, but having potential depending where you stood. Exposure was a nightmare, and there has been a lot of jiggery-pokery in Lightroom, and that would require the entire length of this program to explain. It's behind you! is the cry, and that was the case here. Staying at Barmouth just for one night, I went for an evening walk, when the weather, despite best planning, did not come up to expectations. It clouded over, just as I arrived at the panorama walk viewpoint overlooking the Malvac estuary. Disappointment? Yes. No late evening hues, but Fortunately, whilst mooching despondently around, I looked behind me. Yes, the cloud was breaking over the Irish Sea, and 
coming my way. Quick change of tempo and location. Rossini would have helped me here. Soon I was shooting off to Dinas Ole, a wonderful elevated viewpoint for Cardigan Bay. Timing perfect, and so hopefully is the photography. But I couldn't do without the former. A perfect end to the day and this program.